There are many types of spanners. Choosing the one to use usually depends on just two things. How tight is the fastener? In other words, how much force is going to be applied to it? And how accessible is it? How much room is there to get the spanner onto the fastener and then turn it? It's always possible a spanner will slip. Anticipate what will happen if it does before putting a lot of tension onto the spanner. And pull a spanner towards you rather than pushing it away. A spanner will only do a job properly if it's the right size for the nut or the bolt to be turned. The size used to describe a spanner is the distance across the flats of the nut or bolt to be turned. It can be metric in millimeters or imperial in inches. Two systems with a range of spanners especially made for each one. The systems can be identified on the spanner by either a number for metric spanners or a fraction followed by AF. Another system once widely used in the United Kingdom was the Whitworth system. It used fractions but they did not refer to the distance across the flats of the fastener. Some older British and Australian machines use Whitworth size fasteners. Some Whitworth sizes are not interchangeable with metric or imperial systems. There are a few spanners from one system that are the same size as those in another. But as a general rule, spanners from one system should not be used to work on nuts and bolts from the other. These are adjustable open-end spanners, usually referred to as shifting spanners or simply shifters. The lower jaw can be moved to fit any fastener size within the spanner range. Shifting spanners should only be used if the correct sized spanner is not available. Both the fastener and spanner could be damaged if they are used on really tight bolts or nuts. Open end spanners slip easily and quickly onto fasteners and that's particularly important for nuts and bolts in awkward places. The angle on the head allows it to be used in two different positions. While an open end spanner often gives the best access to a fastener, if it's extremely tight, the open end shouldn't be used. This spanner only grips across two flats. If the jaws flex slightly or the flats don't fit tightly between them, the spanner can suddenly slip when force is applied. Use a ring spanner to break such a bolt or nut free, then the open end. The open end spanner should only be used on fasteners that are no more than firmly tightened. Ring spanners grip a fastener at the corners just like a socket spanner, the sort of grip needed if a nut or bolt is very tight. Ring spanners have different sized heads at each end. It isn't as convenient as a socket, but it'll go places a socket can't and still let plenty of force be applied. One disadvantage of the ring spanner is that it can be slow and awkward to use once the nut or bolt's been loosened. The combination spanner is a good tool in a tight spot. It has a ring on one end for gripping and breaking the fastener's hold and an open-ended spanner of the same size on the other end. This is a more convenient way of turning a loosened fastener in a confined space. The pipe wrench grips pipes and tubes and it can exert a lot of force to turn them. Putting more pressure on this wrench tightens its grip more and more. The jaws are hardened and serrated, and increasing the pressure also increases the risk of marking or even gouging metal from the pipe. A variation on the open end head is the flare nut spanner. It gives a better grip because the flats meet on five sides, not two. The open sixth side lets the spanner be used on nuts and fittings associated with pipes and tubing. But again, don't use the flare nut spanner on extremely tight fasteners. The jaws may spread, damaging the nut. 
The flaring tool has two parts. A set of bars with holes that match the diameter of the pipe end to be shaped and a yoke that drives this cone into the mouth of the tube. The two most common shapes are a single flare for pipes carrying low pressures like a fuel line and the double flare for higher pressures such as in a brake system. To make a single flare start with the pipe level with the top of the flaring bars. With the clamp screw firmly tightened, the feed screw flares the end of the tube. Making a double flare is similar, but more of the tube is exposed to allow for the folding over into a double flare. This double flaring button now goes into the end of the tube. The double flare button comes out and the pipe looks like this. Turning the feed screw completes the forming of the double flare. The Allen key is designed to be a snug fit in screws with a socket head. The socket and the key are hexagonal in shape and there's a correct size key for every socket. So Allen keys come in sets. They can be in either the metric or imperial system and are categorized in millimeters or fractions of an inch according to the distance across opposite flats of the hexagon. They give the best grip on a screw or bolt of all the drivers and this shape makes them good at getting into tight spots. A wheel brace is a specialized wrench. This model has four different sockets, one on each arm. Never hit or jump on a wheel brace when loosening wheel nuts. If the brace won't remove them, use an impact tool. When using the wheel brace, the force provided with your hands is adequate to secure the nuts properly. To cut a thread in an awkward space, this T-shaped tap wrench is very convenient, but harder to turn and to guide accurately. Larger bolts and nuts must sometimes be tightened to a specified level, tight enough to hold components together, but not so tight that the component or the fastener could fail. This level of tightness is called a torque specification. Bolts and nuts are often marked to tell you how strong they are, how much torque can be safely applied to them. This is a grade 5 bolt, as these markings show. This is a grade 8 bolt, so it can be done up more tightly without danger of it failing. The dots on this nut give similar information. This is a grade 8. These are imperial system markings. The metric system uses numbers stamped on the heads of metric bolts and on the face of metric nuts. Even studs have a marking system to make sure they're not overstressed when you tighten them. This is a torque wrench, also called a tension wrench. It tightens bolts and nuts using the drive on the end which takes any sockets and accessories found in an ordinary socket set. What makes this a special way to tighten fasteners is a scale that allows how tightly the nut or bolt is being done up. This head bolt is being tightened to a specific torque recommended by the manufacturer as being tight enough to ensure that the nut won't come loose and the parts are held together firmly but not so tight as to risk breaking the bolt or stripping its threads. Manufacturers don't specify torque settings for every nut and bolt but when they do it's important and that's why the torque wrench is such an important tool.